Oh yeah, she's that country girl who overcame the stigma that southern women are barefoot, backwoods, and backwards. Now she's an articulate voice for conservative values and wisdom in America. Sitting on her front porch sharing common sense, here's Marnie. Hi, welcome back to my front porch where we talk about common sense principles. Common sense principles. In the last episode, we talked about the proper role of government and how it is an extension of what we as individuals have the right to do ourselves and nothing more. I'd like to read a quote for you today that is very interesting. It's from John Locke from about 300 years ago from two treatises of civil government. He wrote, for nobody can transfer to another more power than he has in himself. That's what we talked about with the proper role of government. And nobody has an absolute arbitrary power over himself or over any other to destroy his own life or to take away the life or property of another. So we don't even have the right to destroy our own life. And you see this in our legal system, this basic moral code because people who try to commit suicide, that's that's a crime, right? There's punishment associated with that. So I was thinking about this in terms of the whole pro-choice, pro-life conversation that's really heating up in the United States right now. And there are those who feel like, okay, that fetus is an extension of the mother, right? That this is the mother's choice, it's her choice to whether to kill, well, they would never say kill, but terminate the life of, oh, and they wouldn't say it was life, would they? Okay, (laughs) to terminate a pregnancy, okay? That they can choose to remove this thing inside of them arbitrarily if it's inconvenient for them because it's just like a mole or a wart or something like that. But this being inside of them has a heartbeat, right? We can track that it has a heartbeat. At a certain point, it has a heartbeat. It is a life, okay? It is a life. Now, whether you want to admit that or not, I guess, is another matter. But let's look at this in terms of John Locke's quote here. He said... Nobody has an absolute arbitrary power over himself or herself or over another to destroy his own life or take away the life or property of another. So the mother saying it's her body, her part and extension of her life, she doesn't have a right to destroy her own life even. Okay? That's kind of an interesting thing I had never thought about before. There is a living part of her that's there. And if it's hers, let's say that that baby in there is hers. She doesn't have a right to commit suicide. She also doesn't have to have a right to commit suicide for the baby that is inside of there. Does she? (laughs) She's destroying life. Not even her home life is allowed to be destroyed by moral law, yet She's destroying life, right? She's destroying, whether you want to call it hers or its own entity is irrelevant. Life is being destroyed. And we're not thinking about that, I don't think, as a country. We think of it in terms, well, does it, is it just a mole, you know, or a tumor she's removing? Or No, it actually has a heartbeat. So there's something living there. It's a living being. It's ironic to me that the same people who would be upset if you took a sack and put some kittens in it and threw it in a river would be okay to suck the brains out of a baby that's going to be born within a few months to a few hours. I mean, some of these laws that are being put into the places, they can be killed right then. Even after they're born, they can be killed, right? I was reading an article and it said 42 million abortions happened in the world in 2018 alone. 2018 alone. And uh, I had posted something about that on social media and somebody said, oh, surely that's not true. That seems way too high. And so I did a little more research and I found a study. And sure enough, 
the average between 2010 and 2014 were 50 million, not 42 million, 50 million abortions worldwide. And it broke them down by regions. And I will share that link with you. But that is just appalling if you think about that number. 42 million in 2018 in the world. During the Holocaust, 6 million people were killed. 6 million versus 42 million. And think of the horror and atrocities that we talk about that happened in the Holocaust. And here we have babies being sucked limb from limb, their brains sucked out, some of them you know, partially, you know, right there to give birth and, you know, just suck their brains out or slit their throats. The doctors slit their throats because they don't want to hear them cry when they're, when they're born. I mean, this is horrific, horrific. I mean, how do we turn a blind eye to this kind of horror? It's crazy. And all of the wars the U.S. has fought all of them, only a 1.1 million plus, maybe 1.2 will be generous, million people died in those wars. We kill on average 600,000 to 1.6 million per year in the U.S. with abortion. How can we not be paying a price for this? There will be a price to be paid. The earth groans under the weight of the blood of innocence. If we are seeing problems in our earth, uh, we have earned it. And even if you don't even take into account what might be coming, right now, ask yourself, who's missing? Who are we missing? 25% of all pregnancies in the world end an abortion. One out of four individuals are not born. What genius who would have invented the cure for cancer or for AIDS or for, you know, Hodgkin's disease or, or whatever is not being born, wasn't born, isn't here, isn't here to, to create the cure, invent the cure. What technologies and advancements, what things would, that would make our lives easier are not happening because the inventors were murdered in the womb. How many of our soulmates, our friends are not here? You know, you look at the number of people who just have just sadness and depression and suicide and could we be energetically, there is no there are no secrets in the energy field or in the spiritual realm, if you want to look at it that way. Could we be, as a society, mourning the loss of one out of four of our friends who are not here with us? You know, you look at people who go off to war and they make it back, but their buddies don't. And they have guilt and they feel horrible that they made it back and their buddies didn't and you know they have to deal with all kinds of PTSD from that just the fact that they made it back that survivor trauma what if we as a society are experiencing our own form of survivor trauma we made it a fourth of us didn't a fourth of us were brutally murdered Not a, not a pretty thing. Who isn't here? Y'all take care. God bless.